Experiment 1, Polymerization, Synthesis of Polystyrene and Nylon 6-6. The objective for this experiment is to synthesize polystyrene through chain reaction polymerization and nylon 6-6 through step growth polymerization. The first reaction that is going to be conducted in this experiment is a chain reaction polymerization. Chain reaction polymerization is indeed a chain reaction initiated by a cation, an ion, or free radical. Free radical polymerization is a method of inducing chain reaction polymerization, which mechanistically is very similar to free radical halogenations of hydrocarbons. The polymerization of styrene to give polystyrene is an example of free radical polymerization. The second common method of polymerization is referred to as the step growth polymerization. This method typically involves the reaction between two different difunctionalized monomers in which both functionalities react to form the polymer. Polymides, such as nylon 6-6, prepared by reacting a diacid or diacid chloride and a diamine, is an example of this type of polymerization. To start off the experiment, collect 2 milliliters of 3 molar sodium hydroxide. Then, using a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, gather 8 milliliters of water. Place 5 milliliters of commercial styrene in a separatory funnel and add the 2 milliliters of 3 molar sodium hydroxide and the 8 milliliters of water. Then begin to shake the mixture and allow the layers to separate. After that, draw off the aqueous layer, which should be at the bottom, and wash the remaining styrene with two 4 milliliter portions of water sequentially. Then transfer the styrene into a small Erlenmeyer flask and then proceed to dry it with a small amount of calcium chloride. Then assemble an apparatus for heating under reflux. It should look something like this. Then measure out 2 milliliters of the dry styrene and add it to a 25 milliliter round bottom flask equipped with a stir bar. After that, collect 5 milliliters of silene and add it to the round bottom flask as well. Then go to the supply hood and add 7 drops of terbutyl peroxy benzoate to the flask. Then proceed to stir and heat the solution to reflux for 20 minutes. If the solution starts to bubble, don't be alarmed, just reduce the heat. After 20 minutes have passed, allow the solution to cool to room temperature. As you wait, you can place a piece of parafoam on a watch glass and make sure to completely cover the watch glass. After the solution has come to room temperature, pour about half of the mixture into 25 milliliters of methanol and stir.
After you are done stirring the solution, collect a white precipitate of polystyrene by allowing the solid to settle and decant off the methanol. Then place a few drops of the remaining half of the reaction mixture on the parafilm and allow the polystyrene to dry until the following lap period. Observe the different forms of polystyrene that are isolated. Then we're going to prepare nylon 6-6. In order to do so, place 10 milliliters of 5% aqueous hexylmethylamine into a 50 milliliter beaker. Then add 10 drops of 20% sodium hydroxide, which is not shown. While slightly tipping the beaker, carefully add 10 milliliters of 5% adipoyl chloride and cyclohexane. By pouring it down the wall of the beaker, being sure to form two layers, there will be an immediate formation of nylon at the interface of the two layers. Use a copper wire hook to pull the nylon out from the center of the beaker continuously to produce a rope. Nylon rope can be pulled in this way for many feet. Use a copper hook to stir the remaining two-face mixture to make a nylon ball. For the first part of this experiment in the preparation of polystyrene, dispose of solid polystyrene and parafilm in the solid waste container. Do not dispose of any solid polymers in a non halogenated waste container. In the second part of this experiment in the preparation of nylon 6-6, rinse the solid nylon with water and blot it dry with a paper towel. Dispose of all nylon waste in the solid waste container. Any remaining aqueous solution should be disposed of in the halogenated waste container. Do not dispose of any solid polymers in the halogenated waste container.